<laughs> All right, so we're gonna get back on this uh, 2000 FXR4, right? Yeah. All right. So we're trying to figure where we left off uh, last week. Pretty much uh, everything we need to do right now. Okay, so we got some uh, lifter blocks, these fresh powder coats. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up a little bit. You're in charge of that. So we take our file. There's no high spots. Did you get that out yet? No. Yeah, sort of. This pops in. There's a third pop. Oh, yeah. You can feel the high spot when you come across it. When the file just rolls across like this, you get it cleaned up. This file has a smooth back so it doesn't tear up the gut block. Here it works hitting the high spots there, and then it goes easy. If you have cheap powder coat and you put pressure on the gasket, it'll blow the powder coat off. But this stuff probably is good, so it doesn't do that. But either way, we make sure the surface is nice and clean. So now it's got some particles on there because you didn't clean it correctly. Filed on it after you cleaned it last time. I think that might have happened. That might have been what did it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll make sure there's no uh, no debris in there. We don't want to transfer no debris. Okay, so those are good for now. All right, we kind of we'll use some new chrome hardware because you're cheap or uh, you like good stuff. One or two. Okay, that goes over there. This is going to have to be cleaned up because it's kind of nasty looking. So I'm going to get a little carried away right there with our tool. But that should be outside the seal, so it shouldn't matter. Hmm. That one there should be okay. I think it's past the seal area. So it's not bad enough to throw it away. And it's still flat on the outside edge here, so we're good. We'll be able to save that. Okay. Now you brought in a snap ring for this this time. Mm -hmm. Looks like that. So we can put this on there now. going to be happy with this all rotating inside the case, I bet. For sure. When you spin them, it screws or moves a roller on and slides on. Otherwise, they kind of drop down and jam in. <laughs> okay, this here has got to be expanded to go on there. Unless you get some really strong thumbs. Do I have really strong thumbs? No. Use a tool. I like having it toward the top when I do this. Got a good view back there? Mm hmm. Clips are pretty strong. Come on. Doesn't want to go. Not that I'm pushing very hard, but my fingers are getting sore. There we go. Okay, it's not all the way on though, it's just partially on. So now you gotta shove it on the rest of the way. And you rotate and make sure it's in a groove, like that. That's in. And your fingers are gonna hurt for a few minutes, but that's normal. Pain's part of the game around here. So you wanna make sure you got clearance on your bearings, they're not tight. So you gotta slide. Gotcha. Very important. Okay, that part's done. Okay, this was, uh, I think we're pretty well all cleaned up. I think everything on this is done. Still got 
that saw went out last week. How that happened. So I'm going to file across this surface here to make sure it's good. I think I already did all these, but eh, maybe not. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt to make sure. Okay. Now, we didn't replace this Timken bearing. It was already done recently. So these are basically brand new. So we're good to go. There's no dirt on that. So brand new Harley bearings. This is for a 16 model, see, 1916. Maybe it's 2016. there from China? Probably, right? Okay. We're not using this. We're not using that. We're not using that. Extra parts. Okay, so these parts we're going to use in the spacer. And then the last one I just did a few a couple days ago was one and a half thou too fat. These are too thin. This one's huge, it's 10. That's pretty damn big. That's a big one. So we'll see if that's what it needs. Okay, we're going to go ahead and work on this here. This is our seal spacer. Oh, look, you got two seals to choose from. Mm. You got a genuine Harley one to use, or mm. you have a genuine, genuine Harley. Harley one. Yeah, geez, those are my, almost the same then, huh? Genuine Harley. Yeah, we're not screwing around around here. Okay, we want this, this look to be nice and clean, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do a little sanding on that. So let's go to the machine over here, depending on what we're doing. Just to get to right to the right edge there, so can't go in too deep. Okay, I take a piece of a uh, finer emery paper. That's super fine, 180. That's not too super fine. It's just fine. Use the file as a backer so it stays flat.
now it's nice and smooth. So. Now we got to clean the grit off. It's full of grit. My hands are full of grit too, see it. <laughs> we'll be back. This is clean. Okay. How's the camera working now? Uh, I think it's working just fine. You see my hand? I can definitely see See my hand. finger? Oh, I see that. Okay, good. Back up. In my way. That was an equipment vial or uh, equipment failure there. I'm going to call that. This high-tech studio equipment doesn't always work in the... It was not the uh, photo guy doing it. In the... Uh, the videographer. It was not him. Yeah, I don't know if... Uh, or her. You might be a girl. We're not going to tell. It's I don't know secret. if... Uh, Where'd your washer go? Did we lose it? Uh -huh. there it is. Okay, we got to put some lubricant on these because we're going to put them together. Unless you want to do a dry. You want to do a dry? Nah. You realize I just did this yesterday on video? Um, no, I did not realize you it. You didn't see the video from yesterday? No. Last night? Nope. No. Some of this stuff is repetitive around here. Okay, you see I got lubricant on the bearings now? Oh, yeah. See, so let it soak in. Okay, this goes on your upside down. That means you got to put it like this. That's how that works. And you got gooey fingers now, too. Gotcha. Okay, where's my snap ring? <clears throat> now, do not forget to put your bearing spacer between your bearings. Your case will not appreciate it when you do not have that. There's a video if you look through there for about that. There might be some issues involved. That maybe someone didn't like how I put it back together. Okay, that screws on the end of the crank. Boom. Now you go down and put the bearing down. Now we are not pressing on the flywheel. You do not want to press the flywheel because it goes like this and knocks it out of true. This here actually presses the bearing on the shaft, but you're pulling on the shaft on this side. All the stress is on the shaft, between the bearing and the top of the shaft. There's no stress on this. If you go and beat this on with a hammer, then you're stressing this, you'll knock it out of true again. Those are all bad things. So do not do any of those if you want your crank to be true. See how it stopped right there? You collect that. It goes centers it up. There, at some point it goes down like it's supposed to now. Now this will make me warmer. <laughs> Yesterday I was had to sweat it off for an hour after I did that because I got warmed up. So the ambulance is coming here. That's the fire engine coming to warm, cool me off. I'm getting hot. <clears throat> an emergency somewhere around the area. He's got, he's got the hauling ass horn on too, you hear that? It's a good uh, good body workout, full body. See I'm pivoting on my feet if you notice when I'm going like that. The whole look. Yeah I'm going like this when I'm doing it. Okay we are now bottomed out. So you hold that part so it stays on there. Now we have a roller bearing right here, thrust bearing, to make it easier for me. Not necessary to have, but it does make it work a lot easier. Now SNS makes a rack and pinion style tool that I don't like, but I have them. I guess I know I don't like them. <clears throat> the problem with this, it goes real quick down. It puts a lot of stress on the wheel because you got to yank on it with a big breaker bar. Gotcha. But the biggest thing is you can't put a steady load on it. You go down and boom, you stopped. Hmm. So you can't have a fixed tight load and then check something, which you'll see in a minute. So I like this tool here. Well, the US like most tool has been modified. This part here is not factory, this here is. I extended it. Hmm. Okay, now, remember what I was going to do before I put the case together? Zero. Drawing a blank from an hour ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know why I want to do these now before I put the motor together? Uh, so debris does not fall down into said motor. Ooh. You're smart. You figured that out all by yourself. 
Uh, no, actually, I remember you telling me about an hour ago. <laughs> oh, I actually said that? You oh, did. Oh. You did. I will not tell a lie. Okay. I'll make sure you bleed out the name right here. There's a name right here I can't read. Oh, thank you. Yeah, look up there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Some customers do not want to know, identify their crap or special kit. Okay, so there's instructions. Did you read them? Yeah, I got it. Good. I'm all over the instructions too. Okay, here's how you do this. Well, this one here, I might actually have to read it because it doesn't have a damn stop on these stupid bolts. What's up with that? Yeah, stupid. Okay, we need a nut. Okay, now this should be big on this side. It is not. So, dumbass Harley makes them the same size on both, which is stupid. So, that means it's not going to be tight in the case because I can take this nut and put it on this side easily. The older ones that were made better, they have a big side and a small side, and then mm -hmm. they have a shoulder. I like the one that has a shoulder, it hits against the case. So Bottom it right down. Right, and it has right. a nice oversized thread, so it goes in nice and tight. And don't come out. And don't come out. This one here you can put on either direction. I don't like this style. So now there's going to be a dimension I have to read, so I actually have to go read instructions now. Damn. 10 to 1, I bet you it doesn't say anything about any of that. Okay, it says this side is up. The Loctite patch is on the bottom side. Jeez, what a genius. Okay. These are made in 01, that's the problem. Twin cam error. Nothing's any good on twin cams. Okay, install studs. Install studs until free level length is 5.71 plus or minus 50 thousandths. So how much is 5,700? Just under three quarters of an inch. So five and three quarter. That would be how far? Uh, that would be uh, six inches. So about a quarter inch. Just about a quarter inch less than what just this is. Just about a quarter Maybe inch. just a quarter inch plus. Quarter inch plus. Plus, plus a little extra. Plus, plus. A 32nd is probably about a good number to go by. That's 50 thou versus 32, but it's close enough. Okay, so we're going to have to come up with a way of doing that. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I like the method I like, which is you put a ball bearing in here, put a stud on it, and tighten it down until you're where you want it to be. Quarter inch ball bearing? Whatever fits in the hole. Okay. I don't know what size it is. Oh, so not for length. I got gotcha. you. It might be in my drawer over there, though. Hmm. I try to keep at least one over here, but sometimes customers borrow things. See, it fits in here. Oh, yeah. Sweet. What size is that? If someone's going to ask, so now I have to measure it. Back here. What size is that? Should I tell them or let them guess? I'll let them guess. Okay, good. You'll have to investigate. That was not millimeter. This is not a Japanese vehicle here. We work on American. American threads. American. If you don't like it, tough. And now you can go ahead and install this with whatever tool you want to use. Usually I have to use a zip gun, but see how loose these are here? That's why I don't like loose threads. See how loose that is? Uh, that looks... wow. Now, I wow. want to know how you can get 100% pull on your case threads when the thread is the bolt's going like that. Wow. That's brutal. Isn't that stupid? That's brutal. Especially without the shoulder to lock it down. You don't have a shoulder either, but the thing is it's loose. Yeah. I don't even need this fancy tool because it, it's finger... It's not even finger tight. There is no tightness. It just goes in. Okay, it started getting tight right there. So that means it's probably hitting the bottom of the thread. Yep. 
So if you look in the case in here, see how they don't thread it all the way down? Hmm. So if you look at the stud, it's at the bottom of the thread right now. See how it's in there? It just mm -hmm. did it. How much you want to bet a spot right length right now? Like that. Oh, we are way too deep. Oh, we overshot it. We are just over five and a half. So it's a good thing I read the instructions because now I know I have to back this up. Now, see, I have the 700 number right here, so I can go like this and get right at that 710 number they wanted. I'm thinking that's about rare, but see, it's it kind of. It's that's just, all over the place. Now, what I want to know is when you go to put this on there. I might need that later. We lost our bearing over there somewhere. When you go to put this on here and you start screwing this thing down, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to screw it down into the case. It's going to go run on down until it yeah. bottoms out at that five and a half inch number. Right. So you know what I think a screaming eagle? Was that screaming eagle? Yep. Screaming turd. Screaming Eagle performance parts. These aren't cheap parts, these are performance parts. <clears throat> I call these cheap ass parts that are made wrong. I had that same problem with the ARP stuff on my uh, race bike. They hmm. have the same crappy design for making our bolts. They may be high quality studs, but they don't make the stuff right. So, Boy, those car guys get pissed when I say this stuff's no good. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like this. What do you think? I don't like it at all. You don't like this? No, either? it creeps me right out. I'm wondering if you, A, if you can use a thread locker in it. That, that, that is thread locker right there. Yeah, no, I... It's doing a good job, too, let me tell you. Yeah, wow. Uh, I'm well, wondering... I could, I could put some of this stuff on there, the sleeve retainer. It would lock that sucker up. And that might be a good option if you <clears> wanted to you wait have, 24 hours, right? But you'd have to put the cylinder on there in the head and torque Measure it down. Measure it all down, right. So they'd all pull straight. That just creeps me out. So what other options do we have on the shelf? You use real parts. Well, what kind of real parts do we got? Non-screaming eagle parts. Do we got something that uh, perhaps has a shoulder? I might have something else besides a screaming eagle stuff in stock. That Let's might... take a look in stock and we'll, we'll see what we'll we got. We'll have to investigate? Let's do that. Okay, we'll be back. That's fun. Okay, we found our fancy spacer. So this is the uh, China Import Ultima one, which is really pretty smooth. They have a lot of road rash on them from production engineering. This is the big dollar S and S one that's supposed to be made somewhere in the USA area, I think. If you can believe what they say. So we're gonna see what that one looks like. I bet you this one costs twice what that one does. Now is it gonna be twice as good? And Jim's now has one too, but I haven't bought one in yet, so. This one's pretty nice looking. Nice. That's pretty smooth. This one here is pretty nice. Huh? A little bit rougher sounding, but not really hot enough much. What are you looking at? Do you have to move it? Get them with the camera and see it. They all had a little dimples in them, little markies. Hmm. a little bit rougher. I think this one's flatter though. This one feels wavy for some reason, but it probably isn't. So this is a little bit, see the, I get the fingernail don't dig in as much? Mm -hmm. A little bit smoother. So you can polish out that one. You can polish both. I always polish them anyway. I don't give a shit who makes them. This one's not nearly as rough as the other one, but it's, yeah, it's there, you know. Different sounds here. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit smoother, but we can polish it either way. But this is polished up a little bit smoother than that one because it's smoother starting. But like I said, it's quite a bit more money, I'm sure. So which one do you want to use? Uh, I think I'd like to save a little bit of money on this one. It's gonna be cheap today. Well, I'm thinking after the the stuff, the SNS. <laughs> this yeah. is SNS. No, uh, uh, excuse me, after the Screaming the Eagle S studs. The SE parts. Yeah, after the SE parts. Uh, wow. Now these are from a different source than SE. These are from this guy. 
Colony. You ever heard of them? A new company. Hmm. Does that say screaming alone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we found our bearing. Okay, let's see if these are any good. Okay, this appears to be just as bad as the other one. On that side. See, we have a shoulder on this side. And this one has the... They didn't put this oversize like they should have been. See? Hmm. So they're still not quite how I like them. But there is a hard stop. But they are soft. So that's... But it, you know, when you tighten it up, it'll go, at least it'll hold it steady, and we'll put a lock tie it'll stay put. I don't like it being loose. You know, it's probably about the same looseness as the other one. Now the older, the old Harley stuff, if you use the original equipment Harley stuffs, they were big on one side, small on the other. Huh. Okay, now this is a clone. What about s Do you think s is any better? Uh, let's find out. I think I had a bag I saw in here. And I, they might be Sportster, I'm not sure what length they are, but... You have to have your little catch-all area over here to wrap stuff. So. Okay, this says a uh, big twin Harley Davidson on it. This appears to be an unopened package, sir. That's added value right there. No, we're going to open it. Are we going to call this an inspected part now, or are we just going to call it a used part now? Um. Oh, that's used. I'm sorry, sir. You opened that bag. Okay. Can you tell the difference? Negative. So it might be the same company made both of them? <laughs> Mike, it very well be. Okay, that's, that side is the same. Here to this side. Uh-huh. So... I'm thinking that these are made in the same place. Uh, so you're thinking the S and S ones are in the exact same place as the colony ones. Can you see a difference? Yeah, that's the same. That's, yeah. I gotcha. You notice how they got that same red kind of crap yep. on both sides? Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking S and S is not making their own hardware. What a shocker. Jeez, I, am, I would never have thought that. Does anybody believe that? I'm thinking we're going to go with the uh, colony one. What do you think? I think that's the plan. Okay. And we're going to use the non-SNS. Correct. Maybe non-US product here. Just because we want to. Okay. So now we're going to use something called Loctite. And even though this is not Loctite, this is Thread Locker. We're not, we're not using the green? No. This is called stud and bearing mount. You know, you put a little bit in there. That probably works too much. I got a little carried away there. Once it started to flow, and it started flowing pretty good. There it is. So I put one line there, and I put a little line in there. It's more like a lake in there. Now you put it on both sides, so you got it doesn't wear away. Okay, so that's all the way in. What was that length we wanted? And they wanted uh, five and three quarter. It was plus. five, seven, ten. Okay, well, right now we're at seven thirty. Now we have to use this uh, unknown size bearing that we had to go find on the floor that somebody threw on the floor over there. I don't know who that somebody was. I'm not saying. But I think he wears an ugly sweater. Is what I've been told. I call it a warm sweater. I don't give a shit what it looks like. There we go. There we go. Okay, now you got to make sure you don't torque these too much. But you just a little pressure like that is all you need. That's probably what about five pounds, ten pounds, maybe. Yeah, just enough to put it down there tight. Okay, so now we have a nice precision installed stud that's not going to fall out. And the biggest thing is it won't move when you put the other one on there. Okay, now we're going to do this again. Try not to put so much Loctite on there this time. Now Harley puts these shoulders on all over the places. 
When they first came out with studs, they didn't have shoulders on them and they had a big socket up here because they had an actual real bolt. They did that for two years. Then they got smart and they went to a nut. See, this is actually a nut, not a bolt. It's called a sleeve nut. And they went to a stud that had no shoulders on it. Then they went to a stud that had a shoulder on the top, which didn't make any sense at all. Then they went to a shoulder on the bottom, like these are. And now I guess they're back to no shoulders again. But the problem is those other ones were tight when they went to case, they weren't loose, so... So Harley has gone backwards on their engineering. Method. At least that's what I think. I could be wrong. See how much Loctite you're putting in there? Just enough to put a little line in there. Gotcha. About the same amount on here. Yep. And you notice I'm not getting any waste. Well, we didn't measure our height yet either. <coughs> is occupied. Let me get a different vice. <clears throat> that is not supposed to do that. <clears throat> See that's what the ball is, it doesn't it only has a limited amount of holding power with the ball on the tip in there. It only hits right in the center, so it's supposed to break free real quick. Hmm. I wonder why they did that. I've never had one do that before. Well, I guess that's because they're not tight in the case is why they do that. <clears throat> as much this time. And I held on to it. <clears throat> now this is a genuine case, it's not a replacement. That is correct. Okay, so we can't blame it on the holes being wrong. Well we know it's that way anyway because I put this I put that on both ends so I know it's that way. Because it's probably about five thousand difference in the stud size between the both, you know, between one side and the other. Hmm. That's how they're supposed to be anyway. Obviously, they're not anymore. These are rolls, so when you roll them, if you just roll a bit more, it swedges up bigger. You can do it that way. make it whatever size they want by swedging it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want a what, 5 what? 571. 5710. About 730. 720. 7530. About 720. Now how good are my eyes? Questionable. Yeah, that's right. It is questionable. How close with my 720? Wow. Damn. What did I say 730? Was I 2 off or 12 off? One was. I'm gonna say 25. I forget. 
I have to play back the video. Rewind the tape. Rewind it. See how bad my eyes are getting. I'm almost blind now. So I can't hold 3,000 no more. Actually, I could guess closer than three. I was holding three, no problem. I could guess it closer. I used to be able to hold about a thou tolerance. So I wanted to ask you a question. No, I didn't do that. There was a guy down the street. <laughs> so you uh, you pretty much have grown up in the machine shop. Yeah, Pretty I much your entire life. Your father was a machinist, you're right? You're interviewing me, are you? Um, it's a little bit like an interview. Oh, shit. <laughs> but is that is that correct? Your father was a machinist? No. No? No. Nope. He did use our machines, though. Aha. Uh -huh. He's just not trained to be a machinist. Ah, okay. Is there a difference? Uh, I, I can clearly see that there must be a significant difference. I actually did go to machine shop school, so I'm technically a machinist. But, but you grew you grew up in basically around this, your, your entire life. I kind of knew what I did when I went to school. I already knew how to use my tool. Yes. Right, I got you. I got you. It's Let's, that piece of paper you get. That's kind of old school, though. A lot of people don't have that opportunity to grow up in a machine shop and be around that type of stuff, and you know, and then go to school to get certified. And well, it wasn't really a machine shop per se. We only had a lathe back when I was growing up. So oh, okay. When I was older, we pick up the milling machine. That was a uh... yeah, technically I guess. when I started working on by doing motors. That's about when you got the mill, so. Hmm. So I guess they kind of go together. That was in the mid '70s. You have to go look at the label and the lathe. There's a date thing on the thing that tells you when it was. I think he bought that stuff in '77. So. Wow. Yes, yeah, so you've been doing this for a minute. And you've worked in aerospace. Nope. No. Solar. Mm -hmm. Uh. Not aerospace. Dad worked in aerospace. He worked at Roar. Oh. He worked on B-52s in 52. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When they were first made. <laughs> right. Yeah, he did that. Interesting. But that was not a machinist job, though. Called an assembler job, I guess. He used to build the uh, electric panels, hydraulic panels, whatever they were, some kind of panels that they put on the inside of the plane. Hmm. That was his job. He used to piss off everybody. Shocker. So it runs in the family, that's what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, he used to make a lot more than they did, and they got didn't like that. So. Mm. And his always passed, and theirs didn't always. So. Right. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> okay. There's your uh, your somewhat better studs than the other ones. So what did you learn today? Uh, Besides dad knew something. Well, like uh, one end of the stud should definitely be uh, larger than the other if you've got the good, good, good stuff. That's it should always have a shoulder on it because why wouldn't you bottom it out? It just makes no sense not to. Well, that's on this design. And then uh, don't trust that uh, Screaming Eagle parts are better than uh, anything else because you just don't know until you know. And um, that's so far what we've learned today. You learn that China parts are just as good as American parts on some parts. Well, some are and some aren't. Well, you crank, we're still up on the air on that one. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, you have videos showing both of them being shown. So. Well, there's a reason why the uh, OEM original Harley one is not in going into those cases. Oh, way off there. Look at that.
I think that looks OSHA approved. That could be a sweater or a bad thing to have over there. You can grab your leg if you know how to do it. That would be called the emergency brake right there. See how to stop? Right. I've seen that. So you can keep your hands, you can keep it smooth over there. So. I, won't, I won't be trying that. But if you get over this side when the sharp edges are... Things get exciting real quick. You got that right. <laughs> We like we like to keep the lathe nice and boring. So it's how you modify your tools to not hurt you is what matters more importantly. There we go. How they're made originally. Okay, so now we got a little bit smoother finish, but it's still rougher than the S and L thing. Mm -hmm. But it's at least pretty smooth. But we don't have that fancy little double gouge like yours had in there. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the leaky leaky gouge? Yeah. Yeah. No All leaky right. leaky gouge. So we we'll back, I gotta clean this now. I got right. my I got my hands dirty again. So. We're on our way. Awesome.